When Kevin confuses me with his mom. <laughs> Are you my mother? <laughs> no. Get away from me! <laughs> what is your problem? Boy, ain't your mama. Hello friends, Trace Amounts of Science. Today we're getting into some stories about Kevin. I had a couple posted on my subreddit recently, and it occurred to me that it had been a while. It's hard to find Kevin sagas, and sagas are really what I like to sink my teeth into. But this one's at least a two-parter, so we'll see what we can make it do. Thank you so much for joining me. The day two Kevins nearly unalived my husband. Well, it sounds to me like you need to unalive them right back. <laughs> That's justice. Uh, there's an early edit. Yes, I'm aware I can write down the word kill on Reddit, but I'm on YouTube more than here. And because YouTube is trigger happy with taking down comments that say certain words, I developed a really bad habit of alternate words regarding whatever I'm trying to say. Yeah, YouTube do be like that for real. <laughs> no more saying cuss words, guys. It's inappropriate and violent. I really don't understand why that is. If we don't talk about the bad things, then the bad things never happen. But yeah, I also understand advertising revenue. It's whatever. So uh, we begin our story. I used to be friends with two guys who were complete Kevins. I knew them through my husband, and we used to hang out all the time. For clarity, they would be called Kevin 1 and Kevin 2. <laughs> Kevin 1 was black and very passionate about his history, which is awesome because we should always be passionate about the history of our ancestors. Yes indeed, this is my history, let me tell you about this Tumblr post that I read. <laughs> oh cool, uh, awesome. You were a muckraker, I was a muckraker. Uh, he, she, we, me, muckrakers, okay? <laughs> Get that muckraker build. Anyway, OP says, uh, Kevin One would say things that made absolutely no sense regarding other parts of history. Yeah, I, I seen the type. <laughs> he said that all Native Americans are dead, and that anyone, his words, not mine, claiming to be Indian was lying. <laughs> yeah, it's just so far back in the past now. Three, four generations. You might as well be talking forever ago. He honestly did not believe the documents I had to prove my ancestry, saying that it could easily be faked. Yeah, just like your fucking Tumblr post. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you have any proof of the things that you claim? He's like, look, here's an AI-generated image of a black pharaoh in front of a, a pyramid. I'm like, oh, okay. Cool, awesome, yeah. Let's all be passionate about the history of our ancestors. <laughs> Supposed history. Like, if you're gonna question my validity, then I'm clearly gonna question yours, right? <laughs> Kevin One even said that the Navajo Code Talkers were just a bunch of actors, and that we won the war because of the nuclear bombs. Except he probably called them nuclear bombs. Because <laughs> he's a Kevin! He was so sure of his history that he would take great offense if you showed him documents or counter-argued his claims, resulting in him having this ridiculous pout and sulking like a child. You called this person a friend? Or I guess past tense, you called them a friend. But yeah, that would make me end the friendship basically immediately. You can't even admit you don't have a counterpoint except the truth, you just sulk like a little baby. Yuck. <laughs> He would also deliberately drive slow if we were in an 80 mile per hour zone just to get back at a trucker. Yeah, I'm guilty of that one actually. <laughs> I'll line myself up alongside the trucker. Then we both do the same speed while the car behind me goes crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, you gotta find little ways to entertain yourself. <laughs> Kevin too was a real piece of work as well. He was your garden variety trailer trash guy who blames everybody but himself for his misfortune. Well, you see, the secret here, OP, is you gotta get down on his level. Uh, talk to him in a language he understands. There's this show called My Name is Earl. <laughs> you know the kind of guy who does nothing but bad things and then wonders why his life sucks? Well, that was me. <laughs> it's a really good show. Never got a proper ending. How tragic is that? But yes, already Kevin too, I can tell, needs to take control of his own life. He needs to be a bit more proud of the history of his ancestors. 7-Up, NyQuil, and Twinkies. <laughs> Campbell's Chicken Noodle Soup, 
Dayquil and Sprite. Yes. Quickly, Stan, we must give it to everyone. He would do under the table jobs because he claimed that it helped him to save money, even though we told him that that was beyond illegal. Yeah, the tax man always comes to the call. They know. I don't know how they know, but they do. <laughs> he had a creepy obsession with his ex-girlfriend and firmly believes to this day that her seven-year-old son was his, even though they broke up nearly ten years before she got pregnant. <laughs> Want to know how he's convinced? The little boy has blonde hair. Kevin, too, has blonde hair. And so does his ex's husband. Yeah. She's got a type. <laughs> he also lived in motels because he said it was cheaper compared to an apartment. I'm not holding anything against people who do live in motels, but his logic was beyond stupid. Well, the stupidity is what makes him so delightfully Kevin, isn't it? The one thing I'm most curious about uh, Kevin too is whether he does anything for that kid that he thinks is his. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. He's just like, yep, that's my boy. Hey, yo, uh, when's his birthday, Kevin, too? Ah, uh, shit, I, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, so what did these two Kevins have in common? Their complete lack of gun safety. Oh, good. They have guns. <laughs> I'm going to check if this is loaded by putting it in my mouth. <laughs> oh! Uh, I'm not joking when I say that whenever they come into some money, they spend it all on guns and ammo and leave them all over the apartment slash motel room. Yeah, and then you leave a hot pookie on top of a stack of newspaper, it lights a fire and all the bullets go off. It's like you could have survived the fire, but you, you shot yourself to death with your own popcorn ammo. <laughs> uh, Kevin, one, left a loaded gun by the door of his apartment, and when the landlord had to go there to do some maintenance, he accidentally knocked it over, and it went off! It wasn't an ordinary gun, either. It was a freaking AK-47! <laughs> Is that legal? I guess as long as you don't modify it to be, like, fully automatic. But yeah, that's wild. Just a little reminder from the universe, like, hey, it can end at any time. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be able to sleep that night. The landlord was nearly hit, but thankfully he wasn't, and he was beyond ticked off, because he had a zero tolerance for guns out in the open. You could have your gun, but it had to be secure in a secret location. Yeah, you need to buy a safe. Even if you don't have kids. A safe is never a bad idea. <laughs> Kevin One was evicted. It probably wasn't just over this incident, was it? That seems like an accident. You know, a little whoopsie, I almost shot you in the gut. Just buy him a card. <laughs> Things are gonna be fine. So Kevin tried to sue the landlord for discrimination, of course, despite the fact that he signed the contract acknowledging that he was aware that his guns were to be locked away and secured. Ah, uh, see? You signed the contract. Ironclad! You don't even have to know what the contract says, you just say ironclad. <laughs> He even went as far as saying that the landlord probably shot the gun, but there were only his fingerprints on the gun, not the landlord's. And Kevin, too, actually and firmly believed that the safety features on the gun were just a suggestion. He'd have his pistol out either in the car or in my husband's house, and we wouldn't even know that the safety wasn't on until he said something. Yeah, you, you can check it, I'm pretty sure. If the .2 seconds it takes to put off the safety is enough to, to get you killed in whatever gunslinger fest you're in, then you were probably out of there anyways, dude. <laughs> Let's be honest. We told him time and time again to put the safety on, but he would roll his eyes and say, It's a suggestion. You gotta be a complete idiot to play around with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So why not keep the safety on? That always worried me because he would hang out at his ex-girlfriend's house just to see her son. Yeah, the son that isn't his. I'm gonna let him play with a loaded gun. And the girlfriend allows it. This is really a survival of the fittest situation, you know? Let's just let nature take its course here. <laughs> Here's where the title makes sense. My husband and the two Kevins were hanging out at a house that used to belong to my husband's grandparents. 
The house was now mainly used for family get-togethers because it's a big house and no one wanted to sell it. The two Kevins decided to take out their guns and clean them. No big deal, right? I mean, if you got the safety on, it's probably fine. <laughs> Wrong! Kevin 2's gun was still loaded, and instead of being smart and unloading it, he decided that he was going to clean his gun with the bullet still inside. <laughs> How? How? How did you plan to do that? Well, clean around the bullet. <laughs> and just like that, it went off. My husband was sitting nearby, and the bullet narrowly missed him. He told me that he almost peed his pants, and when he looked at the two Kevins, they just had clueless looks on their faces, and once again continued to try and clean their guns. Yeah, these are not people you, you want to hang out with. Yeah, at least apologize to me. <laughs> you almost blew my fucking brains out. Is I'm sorry too much for you? <laughs> hey, my bad, bro. My husband had had enough and kicked them out. I wasn't there when it happened, but my husband said he had to look throughout the whole room and couldn't find the bullet hole. Might have gone into the floor. Do you guys have carpet in that abandoned house of yours? Does the carpet smell like mildew? <laughs> uh, what the hell is that like a house for family get-togethers? I know that's not the point of the story at all, but I'm also just like, wow. Lap of luxury, this guy, huh? <laughs> We stopped speaking to the two Kevins after that incident, and after another incident, but I may or may not talk about it, because even now I'm still mad that it happened. Oh. From what we know now, Kevin One now lives in a very shady apartment complex, because the incident with his AK-47 caused him to lose any sort of good recommendations for nice apartments. Part of me says the system at work, the other part of me says I hate the fucking system. At the end of the day, I guess Kevin 1 did do it to himself. Uh, Kevin 2 was also kicked out of his motel room because he failed to pay rent. And when a friend offered to give him a rental house with very cheap rent, he single-handedly made it into a biohazard because he never picked up the trash or did laundry or took a bath. Last we heard, he now lives out of state and in a shack with no indoor plumbing. God damn. <laughs> they both claim to this day that my husband overreacted and that he should let it go already. Yeah, dude, we would have driven you to the hospital. Scoop your brains off the floor, put them in an ice chest. <laughs> it probably would just, it would be fine. How can you be mad about something that didn't even actually happen? <laughs> uh, oh, it's classic Kevin, dude. They don't even realize they put somebody's life in danger. Their own supposed child every single day. The landlord who happens to wander into your house, which also, stay out of my fucking house. But if I got the notice that the landlord's supposed to give me, then yeah, I'll put the guns away. It's called picking up your toys. It's very basic. <laughs> they can't even pick up their own trash. Some of the beardier Kevins that I've seen, that's for sure. They like the feeling of holding death in their hands. But instead of a katana that they bought from some guy at a mall... <laughs> they're buying, like, you know, actual weapons. But I guess at the end of the day, maybe it's a good thing, because then they're not out there buying unregistered weapons. <laughs> at least if somebody does get accidentally fed a lead salad, uh, we'll be able to trace it back to the source. Anyway, uh, that's looking on the bright side. <laughs> we'll hop into part number two, and we'll see how that one goes. My husband, the two Kevins, and the 2022 heat wave. That's right, folks. It's going to be a real scorcher out there. Someone asked about the incident that led to my husband and I finally not talking to the two Kevins anymore. So I asked my husband if it was okay to post it. He gave his okay, and here we go. Is this the incident that made you personally mad, even more than your husband almost getting shot? <laughs> It happened in June of 2022 when the heat wave was at its absolute hottest. My husband, who I'll call Jay, was invited to Kevin 2 for a guy's day. Not weird, nothing wrong with that. Just a couple of men taking their shirts off, hanging out, you know? A couple of natty ices, we'll see where the day takes us. <laughs> Our wedding was a couple of months away at the time, and we were planning on moving right after the wedding, so I thought it would be great for Jay to enjoy a guy's day. So Jay and the two Kevins went about their day, and 
I got to sleep in because I had recently quit my job at the restaurant to get ready for the wedding and the move. It was 10 in the morning when I got a call from Kevin 2 telling me that Kevin 1 and Jay got into a huge fight at a scrapyard where they were at and that Jay stormed off in a huff. You're going to marry the guy that hangs out with a couple of idiots in a scrapyard? <laughs> what y'all doing out there, stick fighting? <laughs> I don't care who, somebody's getting hit with a stick. <laughs> I, I bet that's exactly what they're doing. I'll admit, Jay was not having a good day because Kevin 1 and 2 were really pushing him at the time about how his intimate life was over after he got married and that now he was a total wuss. They were doing that ever since he proposed to me and even when he told them to knock it off, they didn't get the message because... Well, they're obviously Kevin's, and Kevin's never get the message. Kevin, too, then said that he was probably walking to his car and hung up on me. I mean, really what they're doing is dumping their own insecurity. I'm alone and miserable, and you should be forever, too. Sorry, not how it's gonna go. I can't wait to move. I can't wait to never see you again. I panicked and immediately called Jay and asked him where he was, and he told me that they basically left him at the scrapyard in 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Feels like 110 degrees. That would be between 40.5 and 43.3 Celsius. Apparently Kevin won, really put Jay in a bad mood, and he just wanted to walk off and clear his head, but Kevin won kept following him and pestering him about how the married life was going to end his intimate times, blah, blah, blah. And Jay, who was really losing his patience, turned and said, Is that why you're single? Oh, right. I forgot. You don't have a girlfriend because no girl in their right mind would want to date you, let alone sleep with you. Yeah, that, that was a bit too real, wasn't it? <laughs> That's why it cut him so deep. He knows that it's true. Kevin One got so angry that he threw a punch at Jay, and Jay ended up punching back, and it was a violent fight to the point where my husband had cuts on his neck where Kevin One had tried to strangle him. Cuts from a strangulation? You're talking about, like, a garrot wire or something. My God, this is why they brought Jay out to the scrapyard, isn't it? They had a plan all along. They were kicked out of the scrapyard by the owner and received a ban. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't come in here no more. This is a high class establishment. <laughs> I do love a good scrapyard though. I I'm not gonna hang out there. But if you got something that you need, hell yeah, check the junk shop. For clarity, Jay drove his car to Kevin 2's rundown shack while they carpooled in Kevin 1's car. Before Jay could even process what happened, the two Kevins got in Kevin One's car and locked it. They told him that since he couldn't act like an adult, they're gonna leave him there as a consequence of his actions. And they sped off, even though Kevin One started the fight. Jay would later tell me that he should have kept his mouth shut, but he would not have punched Kevin One if Kevin One didn't swing first. Whatever, man. Fuck both of them. Bad apples. That's what I say. Good riddance. <laughs> I admire you for, for laying down the law, telling it how it is. So here I am, desperately asking my fiance where he was so I could send him an Uber ASAP because this heat wave was a terrible heat wave. Do you guys not have two cars? I mean, you might not, and that's totally cool. But if you do have a second vehicle, then you go get it. Don't send an Uber. Come on. <laughs> uh, for those who live up north, that heat wave caused a lot of deaths. It actually beat the 2011 heat wave. It was that bad. It's not a competition, is it? <laughs> Jay didn't know how to use Uber or Lyft because he's not tech savvy in that department. I literally don't think it could be easier. The GPS does everything. <laughs> As I was trying to get information on where Jay was, Kevin 2 called me again and told me to not even think about sending an Uber for Jay because he needs to understand the consequences of his actions and to understand what a joke was. I told him that if anything happened to Jay, I'm going to hunt down Kevin 1 and 2. Block. I thankfully got an Uber to pick up Jay and take him to his car, and I told him under no circumstances to talk to those two idiots and to make it back home safely. This good protective wife type of stuff. 
I don't think Kevin 1 and 2 really understand what a joke is. Heat stroke? Yeah, it's, it's not really funny. Usually a joke makes people laugh at the end. Uh, the Uber driver was so nice when I texted him saying that I was using him to get my husband who was basically left behind in the middle of nowhere in the heat. He gave my husband water, turned his AC on full blast, and even stayed in Kevin's parking lot so he could make sure my husband got to his car safely. Thanks, Uber driver. Hell yeah, five stars. I left him a tip, too. That water paid for itself, see? A little humanity goes a long way. Uh, word got out fast about what had happened, and almost everyone in our friend group turned their backs on the two Kevins for what they had done. Good, yeah. How's that for consequences of your actions? <laughs> they, they picked each other over everybody else anyways. Kevin 2's ex-girlfriend decided to finally get a restraining order against him to keep her son safe because she finally caught on as to why he was hanging out at her house. She wasn't a dumb girl, but I just thought it was stupid that she wanted to stay friends with him, even though she knew very well that he still had feelings for her. You're right, OP. It is stupid, but she loves it. <laughs> Validate me. Uh, Kevin Wan was kicked out of his mother's apartment because, aside from that, he left a loaded gun on the floor. Again. Yeah, your mom scoops it up in the, in the vacuum and brains herself. <laughs> uh, what a tragedy. Who could have seen this coming? Jay's parents threatened to press charges against them for what they did, and in their pure Kevin logic, they said that uh, nothing was going to happen because it's technically not against the law to leave someone behind. Yeah, they know all the laws. <laughs> Little did they know that in the area where we lived, if anything happened to Jay as a result of them leaving and because of the heat, they would have been held accountable. Yep, it's not allowed. You can't do that to people. Only dogs. <laughs> hey. Get the f*** out of here. And that was the incident that led to us finally cutting contact with the Kevins. I'm not excusing my husband's behavior, and even he acknowledges that he should have made different choices that day, but still, even if I got into a terrible fight with a former friend, I would at least have the decency to drive them safely to their car so they wouldn't have to suffer under the sweltering heat. Those boneheads still believe that they were teaching my husband a valuable lesson on friendship, and that Jay broke Kevin Two's heart because he, quote, saw him as a brother. Honestly, maybe Jay is a little bit of a Kevin himself, you know? Hangs out at the scrapyard with a couple of knuckleheads, doesn't know how to operate Uber or Lyft apps. <laughs> it's a little weird. What's funny is that Kevin once said that we would be miserable in our married life while they were out there living the good life. Yeah, living with your mom. Or the corpse of your mom after the vacuum cleaner incident. <laughs> but we're still getting those social security checks, hey. <laughs> it's so dark. Um, OP says, my husband and I celebrated our one year anniversary and we are living the best life. We saved up for a long time for a decent house, and we have it. Dude, hell yeah. One year in, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> no, but I'm glad you're happy for real. Uh, we did find out through a friend that Kevin 2 is now obsessed with another girl who is absolutely repulsed by him. Lord help that poor woman. All right, here's what I need you to do. Get some bear mace and a 12-inch hunting knife. <laughs> we'll turn the tables on that, Kevin, yet. Teach him a lesson about friendship and consequences for actions. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. The, the Kevin's obviously just a couple of a-holes. They don't really understand how terrible the things that they do are for whatever reason. I guess it's just ego. And because of that ego that makes them think they're always right, they're, they're just never going to change. So it's good that you and your husband got away. That's what I'll say. It seems to me like your husband may still have some, some tweaker tendencies. <laughs> Hanging out at the scrapyard with his boy, but uh, hopefully he can leave all that behind. Just like you left them Kevins behind. Hey, problem solved. Episode's still looking a little short, so we're gonna see what else we can find here. How about this one? When Kevin confuses me with his mom. <laughs> Are you my mother? <laughs> no, get away from me. <laughs> what is your problem? Boy, ain't your mama. 
Uh, uh, my freshman year of college, I started dating a guy who turned out to be a major Kevin. We met at a party, and he seemed nice enough, and we hit it off. I thought he was kind of sweet in a dorky sort of way, and he paid a lot of attention to me, and me, being a dumb girl right out of high school, thought it was cute. I mean, it is cute to start. It's like, oh, the anaconda is just hugging me. And then <laughs> a little while later, you're like, okay, I really can't breathe. <laughs> uh, after a couple of weeks, we started dating. I was barely 19, and he was 23. This was several years ago, so I don't remember every single Kevin moment, but his general behavior seemed totally devoid of regular common sense. His dream was to be a neurosurgeon, and he was getting straight A's in advanced anatomy and physiology classes and chemistry classes, so he clearly wasn't stupid, he was just a Kevin. Yeah, lacking the street smarts. He got the book smarts, though, and that's good. Maybe he can neurosurgeon himself towards some semblance of normalcy. I'd love to be a brain surgeon. Root around in my own gray matter? Surely I'll make everything better and not turn my brain into a pudding. <laughs> a few of the examples of his Kevin behavior. I was a performance major, and he couldn't understand why I wasn't okay with making out in practice rooms. Every time he would try, I would say, I'm not doing this in a practice room. And he would heave a sigh and back off, but the next time he knew I was practicing, he would come and see me and try again. Like somehow it was just the timing that was off, and not the fact that, you know, we're in a public building, in a hallway of rooms that are used night and day by performance majors, and that all of the doors have very large windows. Maybe that's just part of it for him. You guys just aren't communicating well enough. He's like, this is something that I would really enjoy, and she's like, I don't enjoy that at all. And then, okay, we know where everybody sits on the issue. But you didn't explain it to him, so yeah. Maybe he did think that it was just the timing that was off. I'm gonna give the point to Kevin on this one. <laughs> one time he came to watch one of my performances, but showed up late. And somehow entered through the backstage door instead of the main auditorium. <laughs> In the middle of the performance, he sees me and starts loudly calling out to me from the side wing. <laughs> He couldn't understand why everyone was hushing him. And later, when I asked why he didn't go through the main door, he said, uh, I didn't realize there was a difference. How could you be a doctor but also be such uncultured swine? Have you never been to a show before? Have you never enjoyed a concierto? <laughs> Sit in your seat and shut the fuck up! <laughs> uh. Uh, once we went to the store together to grab some dinner, and we were passing the candy aisle. He suddenly stops what he's doing and starts grabbing every large box of chocolates off the middle shelf and shoving them into his cart. I'm talking armfuls of large boxes of chocolates. I guess it's not the worst addiction you could have. Want my chocolate pudding snack? Chocolate pudding snack? Where is it in the trash? <laughs> that kid got problems. I stared at him in confusion for a few moments, and then asked, What are you doing? And he says with an excited look on his face, hey, These are only two dollars! <laughs> he was looking at the sign for the items on the shelf above, which were tiny bags of single-serving candy. When I pointed this out, he argued with me for several minutes about it, even though literally everything else in the store had the price listed directly under the product, not over it. Yeah, the price is on the shelf that the thing sits on. I'm pretty sure that's standard operating procedure. He's seeing what he wants to see right now. He's really just a child trapped in a man's body. He's like, what? I got enough money to pay for college? I'm gonna buy a mountain of chocolate! <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, that's what your student loans are for. What a mush head. <laughs> He would often talk about how he couldn't understand why his ex left him because I even bought her a puppy. As if that was the solution to all relationship issues. He couldn't understand how his personality, DUIs, and disrespect of boundaries played into any of it. He would always go back to, but I bought her a puppy. Turns out his ex never even wanted a puppy. <laughs> it's an excuse for him to buy a puppy. She has to take it with her because she knows if she leaves it with Kevin, it's going to die. 
And we've seen some disrespect of boundaries, but like with the personality and DUIs and all that, like, why'd you even date him, OP? <laughs> <laughs> About a month into dating him, I went home on Christmas break, and that is when shit hit the fan. Oh, here we go, the mask is coming off. That's why she dated him, he had a pretty good mask. After everything was over, I found out he had been planning on driving to my hometown, about five hours away on Christmas Eve, so he could surprise me on Christmas morning by proposing. This never ended up happening because we got into a fight. He started saying I love you at the end of our phone conversations, and I wasn't okay with saying it back. I told him I wasn't there yet. When I explained that I wasn't comfortable saying I love you yet, he blew up at me over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> After a month, dude, he's gonna propose. Have you discussed this with her at all? <laughs> he's gonna get rejected. And again, his own ego won't allow him to figure out why. He'll be like, but I bought her an engagement ring. It's nicer than a puppy, I'll say that. But still not completely the correct vibe. <laughs> Kevin said that uh, the fact I wasn't ready to say it back to him was evidence I was cheating. Oh yeah, ironclad. That's all you gotta say, ironclad. <laughs> I was shocked since this was the first time that he had ever been angry with me and he went right to cursing me out and calling me all sorts of terrible names. I hung up crying and about 30 minutes later he called back with the typical I'm so sorry, I love you baby, I'm totally gonna make it up to you, garbage. Dash of maltreatment, then you start with the love bombing and we're only a month in. This is as good as it's ever going to get. And if that's the case, you need to fucking run. <laughs> run, b run! <laughs> I went home and talked to my mom about it because I was shooketh. She convinced me that it was a major red flag and to be cautious moving forward. Smart mom. The thing is, my dad has the same temperament and he harshly maltreated my mother and us kids. And I did not want to be with someone who reminded me of my dad in any way. I mean, there is something in your subconscious that's pulling you in that direction, but as long as you stay aware of it and purposely move in the opposite direction, you're probably going to be fine. Maybe get into therapy too. This is where the title comes in. Kevin seemed to have the opposite idea of dating someone like his parents. After we were officially dating, he told me that what originally drew him to me was that I reminded him so much of his mob. That's, that's a creepy thing to say, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you can't, uh-uh. Now obviously, yeah, that's a turnoff. <laughs> but then, I met his mom. And I have no idea what similarities he saw in us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were nothing alike, but he kept pointing things out as if it was obvious. Random stuff like, you both have long hair, <laughs> and both your favorite colors is purple, and your cooking is so good. <laughs> uh, you got a vagina just like my mom. That's... <laughs> uh, I, I I don't understand any of this. I don't think it would be sweet on like any occasion. Just, yeah, don't make that comparison. Cut and dry Oedipus complex. At first I brushed it off as a weird quirk or something, but this fight really put everything into perspective for me. When I called him back finally, I tried to explain to him that saying I love you holds a lot of weight and commitment to me. And then I wanted to make sure that it was how I really felt before saying it. He kept arguing about how he couldn't understand why I couldn't say it back to him. And then it feels totally natural. Uh, and I just don't see how you don't already feel that way about me. And I asked him, what does saying I love you mean to you? Like, what makes you feel that you want to say that to me? And then Kevin said the most jaw-dropping thing I've ever heard out of a grown man's mouth. Well, I say it to my mom, so... I feel like I should say it to you. <laughs> uh, really? Okay. Is this his first relationship? He's just been very sheltered by his mother for a long time. 
There's something weird going on here, that's what I know. This 23-year-old adult man thought that because I was so much like his mother, and he loves his mother, then that must follow that he loves me. Yeah, anybody who has long hair and whose favorite color is purple, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> uh, it seems weird and desperate and, and very, very icky. Uh, I told him I needed time to think things over and to please not love bomb me. I wanted a few days to clear my head. Rather than respect my request, he kept sending me flowers and texts. About a week after Christmas, I got a package from him. It was his Christmas gift to me. Oh, goody. <laughs> One was a burn CD, this all took place in the early 2000s, of all his favorite songs. Yeah, this is my Love James Mixtape Volume 4. <laughs> OP wants to clarify that the CD did not have her favorite songs, not any songs that we liked together, just his favorites. He didn't even burn it for you, he's just like, eh, throw it in a box. <laughs> the second item was a pair of gaudy dress-up earrings, the kind that five-year-olds wear when they want to play princess. They were in his favorite color. Also, I don't wear jewelry that much, as I dislike it, but the jewelry that I do wear is always small and dainty, because that's what I like. I mean, you're expecting a Kevin to notice things. They're not great noticers if you haven't noticed. <laughs> also, on the other hand, he's only known you for a month, so... How often do you hang out? Whatever, probably often enough if you're saying I love you and shit. <laughs> Uh, if I wear earrings, they're small studs. If I wear a necklace, it's a small chain with a little charm at the end. I'm not a flashy person, so these earrings were appalling to me. <laughs> uh, the last gift in the box was a picture in a frame. The frame was Christmas themed, with Santa Claus and trees and reindeer all over the outside. Looked like it came from a Walmart after Christmas 50% off clearance rack. It was not cute. At all. Hey, come on, the Chinese kid that made that worked really hard. <laughs> the picture inside was of him dressed in a suit and tie, standing in front of his Christmas tree, smiling. He looked like he was getting a middle school picture taken or something. Yeah, it was his mom that did it. Now turn your head to the side, Kevin. Put your, your fist under your chin. Oh, you look so handsome. Click. This is going in my cringe compilation. <laughs> <laughs> this was the last bit of nope that OP needed, and she ended the relationship before coming back at the start of the new year. Yeah, new year, new me. I wonder how Kevin's taking the breakup. <laughs> he probably doesn't even acknowledge it. He's just like, yeah, we're still dating. I didn't agree to the breakup, so you can't break up with me. It's in the contract, ironclad. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I gotta say. After everything went down, my sister told me that he had reached out to them before our fight to ask if he could spend Christmas Eve night at their house so he could get up early and come over on Christmas morning to propose. <laughs> she originally agreed, but once our fight started and she found out some of the things that he said to me, she messaged him with, what the hell is wrong with you? After he cursed me out. I mean, if this is the early 2000s, we're paying per text message. And if that's the case, uh, it's gonna cost a lot to figure out what's truly wrong with him. <laughs> she explained to him about my maltreating father and how that was a terrible move on his part and how she's not sure he could ever come back from that unless he did some serious groveling. She ended with, OP doesn't want to date her dad. And his only response to all of this was, It's a good thing I'm not her dad. Winky smiley face. Oh, sure, yeah. That'll fix it. <laughs> The last I knew, he'd been married and divorced several times, still lives in the same small town working as a delivery driver, and every time his profile picture changes, there are about six versions of the same picture, because the first four to five are all oriented either upside down or sideways. <laughs> and then he doesn't know how to delete his drafts, he's just like, eh, it's fine. I guess it's a shame that he never became a neurosurgeon. What happened to those dreams? He spent too much of his, his college tuition on chocolate. 
<laughs> he couldn't afford it. The small blessing in disguise in this story, I guess, is that OP noticed things really quick and got the hell out of there. <laughs> Which is uh, exactly what you need to do. I am curious about the fall from neurosurgeon to delivery driver, but I don't see any mention of that in the comments. I don't think I would want this guy digging around in my brain anyways, because he would be liable to turn it into pudding. He's like, that's how my brain looks like. I thought it's supposed to look like the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> just, just deliver my fucking package, Kevin. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching this video, friends. Join up on the Patreon or the YouTube memberships if you could. Bit of consistent money every month. Really saving us. I I'm not joking at all. If you can't afford to do it, that's cool. I just appreciate you hanging out. Always remember, friends, that you are loved. You are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, uh, bye bye. Anybody?